Hi, I'm Joey and I like money. Do you want to get a cool salary at a cool tech job? Do you want to get into Fang, Facebook, Apple, Amazon, Netflix, and Google? Well, as someone who is able to get into Amazon without any relevant internship experience, I want to teach you how you can try to get yourself into these top companies without having relevant internship experience. And even if you do have internship experience, at least with this video series, I want to teach you how you can bolster yourself through the job application process so you can land those cool tech jobs. Anyways, in this series, I'll break breaking it into a few parts. This first part will be focused on the personal projects that can augment your resume. Also, I'll be sharing some stories about some friends of mine who didn't have too much experience as well and were able to get some awesome jobs in the industry. So without all further ado, let's get right to the video. So first off, I'm a firm believer that the only thing that matters is what's in your head. It doesn't really matter what experience you have, what school you went to. The school that you went to is honestly a piece of paper that people forget about later on. What matters is up here. But as much as what matters is what you know, you still have to get past the resume screening process. So let's go demystify the whole resume screening process. The resume screening process is done through an AI filtering mechanism in the first step. Now it's not done at all companies, but a lot of companies do this, especially the top companies. So what the AI screening process does is it looks for your whole resume and it identifies keywords in the resume. Now it uses some scoring mechanism to score the words and the strength of the candidate by the score. For example, if you went to a school like Stanford, Harvard, or Carnegie Mellon, then it would score your resume as high compared to other people. It also looks for key leadership words such as led the team through a project or developed multi-threaded applications through some scalable database. Having these key technical words is something that will score your resume to be higher. Now there are basically two things that can really trip you up if you don't have an internship experience. The first thing that can trip you up is that, well, if you don't have an internship experience, it can be hard to have the relevant technologies. Maybe. Without internships, you just haven't really worked in some major technology. So you didn't work with a real MongoDB. If you only worked with a theoretical database, so that's something you really need to have, something real practical application. The second thing that trips people up is that they don't have this kind of leadership principle that people are looking for in their resume. And because of that, it doesn't get past the AI scoring mechanism. The second thing is that when it goes past the AI filtering mechanism, it will go to a human recruiter or a human person who's actually able to go and filter through the resumes. If the person filtering through the resume identifies that you don't have a relevant internship experience, then you might just throw it into the garbage bin unless something really stands out. So you want to have something that definitely stands out. And finally, the last thing that steps, slips up people when they don't have internship experience is that, well, even if they can get past the AI filtering, the human filtering, and then they get to the actual interview, in the actual interview, because of their lack of experience, they don't know how to describe how they work with people, how they work on the job. I mean, a common question will be something like, tell me a time where you had to work with a team and you had to solve a problem and you're missing some deadlines, some soft skills question like that. And if you don't have experience like that, it can really trip you up. So I want to teach you how to address all of these flaws so that you can go in to the AI filtering mechanism and you can go in to the human screening part, and you can also go AC interview. Oh no, you don't have any internships. Well, lucky for you, you can absolutely go out and create your own project experience. You can go and deliver a cool application. So here are the critical components of having a good project. The first key component is having a lot of relevant and effective technologies for the field. And honestly, a lot of companies are looking for strong full stack engineers who are able to work across the whole stack from front end to back end. So to do this effectively, you'll want to make some sort of website for your project and something where you can have some back end work, front end work. For the front end work, use some common frameworks such as React.js and Angular. Understand JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. Next up, for the back end, you're going to want to understand for using databases, something common like DynamoDB, MongoDB, or SQL database. You also want to use some technology such as Node.js or Java to handle the customer queries and the customer requests that are hitting your server. And you want to have some way of hosting your website. So let's say you're going to use Google Cloud or Amazon AWS or Microsoft Azure. Basically, you want to have a very popular cloud service. And honestly, if you can pick from those top three, that'll put you in a really strong position because a lot of companies 
are migrating their whole applications to the cloud right now. Having strong expertise in Azure, AWS, or Google Cloud will set you up a lot for success because they want engineers to know those technologies. So host your website on that thing, and then you'll be able to really show off some strong technical expertise in your application. The next thing you want to have for a strong project is to have it be a team project. A team project is something where you develop some Scrum or Kanban, which is basically some software engineering practice for how you organize your project. So you break up your project into tasks, divide it and you organize it on the Scrum or the Kanban board, and then you assign these tasks for your sprint. And then you assign it to each member who's on your team. You want to have your team be about something like four members. Try to find people online, maybe through Reddit for people who are looking to just practice their own coding skills or looking to create their own project. Honestly, you will find lots of inspired people online. Just really make sure the people you find are committed. Hopefully these people will be your friends and you can keep yourselves accountable in some way. Because if you're working in some sort of team where people just aren't passionate about it, you'll be stuck in a situation where you're doing all of the work, they're not doing any of the work, and then they're leeching off some project that you're able to put on your own resume. Also, you're not learning a lot if the people on your team are not working towards the same goal as you are. So find a good team to work with and develop some strong team-based software engineering practices. The last key component of having a strong project is be something that you're passionate about. So I did say just make a simple website, but ultimately, if you do make a website, if you can make it towards something that you're really passionate about, this will be the leadership part that they're looking for in the resume. That's the one that they're filtering for. Maybe it's something where you create some new invention. And because of this, it leads you to make some new patent, or it actually leads you to get real customers hitting your website. You can add in some metrics such as, I received 10,000 customers this month, or I was able to get this number of purchases or orders through my website. Basically, if you want to have a strong project, really treat it as making your own startup company. And then when you make your own startup company, these other big companies will see you and they'll think, wow, this guy has a lot of potential. Let's go put him on our team. So as a quick summary of the three important parts of the project, you'll want to have good technical expertise. Again, something to do with cloud, front end and back end. The second thing to do is to have teamwork aspect to the project. And the final thing to do is just to have it to be something that you can be really passionate about. So then you can go say that you're really proud of and when you go to the interview, it'll really show all the love and the care that you have for this project. So in my master's degree at CMU, the personal projects that I opted for was, one of them was a class project where I worked with a team of four. We use scrum sprint planning practices and we essentially assign each other tasks to build a full emergency social network website. This involved the front end with react.js and we practice our skills with JavaScript, CSS, and HTML to make a front end. And also it involved the node.js backend. We hosted our server on Heroku where you can still reach our website. And also we use MongoDB to store our database. The only thing that I would change today is that instead of using Heroku, which is something that's used more for personal projects, I would have used AWS and spent some money on it just because it's more professional. And when you're using AWS, it's something that more companies are looking for to hire rather than let's say Heroku. And the other thing is that maybe for MongoDB, I maybe would have opted for DynamoDB. But overall, that was able to solve the requirement of having a full stack software engineering project. And that's why my school really loves to have that, pro that project be a class requirement, just because it's such a strong project for getting people into a job. The second project that I had was, since that first one wasn't as much passion, I really wanted to get into cloud. So I took on for my passion projects, the first one being developing a simulation algorithm to predict cloud provider prices based on the existing cloud provider data. I made the simulation with Python. You can input the different parameters such as how much is the customer preference for each company like AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. What are their preferences? And overall, what is the current price of each company? And then it's able to converge on what would be the equilibrium for the current market, the future market prices based on the current prices and the customer preferences for each company. The second passion project that I had was basically trading off the cost and benefit of doing local computation on a device versus transmitting the data over to a computer somewhere else and having that place do the computation for you. 
That's actually the problem with IoT and cloud, where you might have these small devices that don't have that much compute power, but it's would it be cheaper and energy-wise to do the computation on that local device or send the energy over to the cloud and have the computation be done on some computer that's hooked up to the grid. So it has just basically unlimited power source. But then that smaller device has to consume a lot of energy to transfer the data over there. That's my passion project and I really like that one a lot. So with those two projects, along with having my own project in a software engineering project, I was able to really show off for my recruiters and the people looking at my resume. Another example which I have is a friend who wanted to go inside of artificial intelligence with a master's degree at CMU. Basically, the thing is everyone was telling him, hey dude, you can't get an AI job with just a master's degree. They only give those things to people with PhDs and years of industry experience. I mean, there's no way that you're gonna get a, a master's degree as a master's degree, get a job in AI. But he didn't listen to them. He just kept pursuing it and pursuing it. And the things that he was able to show for himself were one of them, he won this class competition for developing a processor for AI and machine learning. Basically, his was the number one and he was able to show it off so much that in an interview, it really showed through his knowledge and expertise of AI, even having zero internship experience regarding AI whatsoever. And the second thing he was able to have was he was able to have a few patents regarding AI. And he just made this himself when he was just doing his own personal projects. He had this idea for something, he made a patent for it, and he showed it in his resume. And honestly, these patents were some of the biggest things that the recruiter said really shocked them the most. That the fact that someone can have a patent and it's just something that you worked on in your own free time. So don't underestimate the value of the kinds of magnitude of things that you can get done in your own personal free time. Anyways, all of that worked out for him expertly because he was able to get a job offer as an AI engineer at Tesla and was also able to get into a top AI company as an engineer for them and he's getting paid a lot of money because of that. And again, this guy has no, he had no relevant work experience before this and just really personal projects. So this just goes to show you that passion really can come through and can really shine with these projects. So this covers the first part of getting an interview through bolstering yourself with some strong projects. In the next video, we'll talk about more things with how to get yourself a job at the next fame company. I'll see you guys next time. And thank you guys for watching. Goodbye.